imagine these fishermen. Fishermen at the time of Christ were among the most humble and least educated. Meeting Jesus for the very first time. And with one word, leaving their jobs, leaving their families, with no money and nothing, and following him. Later in this gospel, we will hear how Jesus calls the fish into the nets after fishermen had worked all night and caught nothing because there were no fish there. But when the Creator called the fish, the fish came to the Creator, knowing the voice of Jesus and following Him. Sometimes the most educated are least able to see the most simple things. And these fishermen knew that there was something more than what they were seeing about the Lord. Reminds me of when Mary brought the infant Jesus to the temple and the righteous old man Simeon and the holy Anna, who spent their whole lives praying, which means communing with God and being with God, knew that in this infant was the salvation of the world. They knew that they saw God. And they were, and Simeon said, Lord, let your servant now depart in peace. I can now die because you fulfilled the promise to me that I would see the Savior of the world before I die. Jesus is somehow a fisherman of men. A fisherman of men. But he catches us not to eat us. Quite the opposite. He catches us and then he feeds us. And he captures us not to bring us into bondage. Quite the opposite. When we follow him, we are freed from the passions and the craziness and the wrong things of this world. He captures us to share his life with us. He captures us to have eternal life. He captures us to know the truth. And the truth is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. When Pilate says, what is truth? He said it to him who is truth, who created everything, who understands everything, who orders the whole universe, and who gives himself up to hang on a cross so that he could join us to his eternity. Brothers and sisters, I congratulate you for all that you have done to establish this church and establish this community. I'm absolutely delighted to see your love for each other and to hear your harmony as you sing together and work together because the Christ that unites us, the spirit of the Holy Trinity that we receive each one of us in holy baptism and chrismation, holds us together and connects us to one another. Nationalities don't matter. Hair on your head or not hair on your head doesn't matter. All kinds of ways, you know, we can, we can identify ourselves and, and people do an awful lot of that because they're afraid of everybody not in their, their group. You know, married priests aren't sure about unmarried priests. Unmarried priests aren't sure about, about married priests. Everybody. Men are suspicious of women. Women suspicious of men. Everybody's afraid. But in Christ, we don't need to be afraid. In Christ, we're united. In Christ, we're one. And His love is enduring and His love is eternal. His love is what connects the Father to the Son and the Son to the Spirit, and the Spirit to the Father, and each of us to God and to each other. 
And at the end of the day, when our breath leaves us, all we have left is our love for each other and our love for Christ. And that love is our eternity. That love is what continues. That love, breath, and cancers and diseases cannot take away. Hearts, when they stop beating, that love continues and is eternal. And ultimately, that love is not a feeling, it's not a thought. It's God himself. And it's God who connects us, and who unites us, and who keeps us together. So I'm delighted today. Delighted to be with you, delighted to, to know you. Uh, of the parishes of the diocese, St. Philip asked me to look over on his behalf. Uh, this is the last one I got to visit because it's all the way, all the way to the Cape. And I got here without any traffic. It was just wonderful. And I really and truly uh, rejoice with you today as you continue your journey and as you continue uh, with Father Nick to accomplish great things, accomplish some things that some of our century-old parishes aren't able to accomplish because they're, um, they take things for granted and they get uh, lazy and, and stale. Uh, but you're energetic and, um, and you love each other. And, it enlivens me and, and, and excites me. God bless you. Let's offer the gifts together on behalf of the whole world because Christ hung on the cross for the whole world and the whole world needs Jesus and the whole world needs our witness, needs our coming together to witness to the truth that God is, to fish others, to bring them to Christ so that the whole world can be saved because that's what God wants. God wants the whole world to be saved.